Hello, this is the hardcore legend Mick Foley, and you are listening to Putting You Over. Yeah. Uh, this guy is called the Standing Streamer. with regret and you're watching putting you over Ow. hello everybody how's it going what's going on welcome to putting you over as i try yeah, to I load up my uh... oh my god it's 9 30 i see our guests rolling in here so we'll let her connect to audio and video. Looking phenomenal. Are are you here, Mother Marissa? I am here. All right. Can you hear me? I can. Can you hear me? Yeah, my internet's been tricky all day. Well, so it's I'm that New Jersey internet. Well, you have Joe's internet too? I don't know what's going on. I mean, Spectrum just is terrible. So <laughs> it's been dicey all day. So I got to reset it probably after this interview but we'll be, i'm here you are here um i have a couple things before we get going to ask you one how did your poker game go tonight well i'm here aren't i <laughs> <laughs> not well <laughs> um i almost had a bail on this because i had promised i totally screwed up my schedule but yep. uh pocket queens uh pre-flop i shoved and Went ran up against pocket aces. So oh. at the end of that, I wasn't gonna rebuy tonight. I figured I, you know, I'd rather get knocked out early sometimes than play for two and a half hours and then get knocked out before the cash and before yeah. the money. And I'm that, okay with it. That's almost even worse. I, you're right. I wouldn't <laughs> want to go out early. And then the other thing uh, I was gonna say to you is uh, a friend of mine, uh, Mike Babchek, uh, wants me to say hi. So I don't know how well that's gonna go over, but. But uh, Mr. Babcheck says hi. I love me some Babs. Yeah. yeah. No, Mike Babcheck. I've known him since I was an intern. I've known him a really long time. Love the Morning Men. Um, always go to Falcon every year. So definitely yeah. support those guys. And um, oh. yeah. yeah, especially sure. Babs. He is that show. He's got that. Uh, I don't know what you'd call it. That I would botch the word, but Babs is the life force. Uh, of the morning man and, and uh, dear friend of mine and, and all that fun stuff. So yes, he says hi. But anyways, thank you for uh, taking the time tonight, coming on the show. Um, I'm actually really honored. I know Vanessa uh, has had you on before. I know she got you on. I'm extremely excited to have you on uh, because I'm a father of three daughters. So the barriers that you have broken down for women in general, let alone women in sports and sports radio, just uh makes makes me proud to have someone of your caliber on so thank you for that thank you so much and it's i'm glad to hear you know father of three be so excited about his daughters and excited about their future and um you know i think it puts in perspective just how many roadblocks there can be for for women still even though you know yes we could take yeah. over the world if we want to but it's still it's still a challenge so you need strong men like you that'll push them and motivate them and let them know that they can do anything um, that the boys can do. So glad to hear it. 
Uh, yeah, they, and they do. They're all in sports, and they do like coding and all sorts of male, <laughs> quote unquote, male areas. So yeah, <laughs> um, the only time Daddy gets mad is when they say uh, that uh, that's a boy's thing or or that's a girl's thing, and I was like, nope, we're not doing that here. Uh, in this house, but but that's another story altogether. Anyways, um, you are uh, very proud that you're from New Jersey. A lot of talent has come out of New Jersey, uh, sports wrestling uh, wise. Yourself has come out of New Jersey. Um, so my question for you is, uh, w- what were your feelings about Corey Graves uh, referring to New Jersey as the shadows of New York? I mean, it's just crazy. I I hated that because (laughs) this is like what we've been dealing with forever. You know, we have two football teams or we had two football teams Mm -hmm. playing out of New Jersey. East Rutherford. Yep. Yeah. God forbid we called one of them. The new, you know, the Giants should be the New Jersey Giants. Let's just, let's just call it what it is. The Giants should be the New Jersey Giants. And maybe I would like the team if they were, because I can't stand them. But, um, you know, to say something like that, you know, I work in Manhattan. I love New York City. You know, for people who live where I live in New Jersey, in Bergen County, Northeastern New Jersey, where you grow up with the city as your, your backdrop, mm-hmm. you know, we feel like the city belongs to us just as much as it belongs to Brooklyn or Queens or the boroughs, you know, because we're just as close. I mean, I'm a, a, a two minute walk to a bus stop that'll get me to the city in 20 minutes. So when you hear things like that, it's like, you know, we have a lot to offer in this state. We have some of the best food in the country. We have a diverse population. We have mountains, we have beaches, we have city. You, you have everything you want here. High property taxes. <laughs> that's <laughs> one thing that's not so great. But, you know, I just think that it's just, it's so easy to dunk on New Jersey that I think it's old. And Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you don't talk about, you know, North Dakota all the time. Even if, you know, even if you're making fun of us, you're talking about us, Mm -hmm. right? So Jersey is always represented on reality shows. We're always represented on, on different kinds of forums. There's always someone from Jersey because we have something to offer. So yeah, Corey Graves was way out of line with that. And I'm glad Dave LaGreca you know, let him know the deal. Yeah, exactly. Well, let's be real. He's from Pittsburgh. That's wrong. <laughs> let's just take it where he's from with a grain of salt. Come on. <sighs> I know Pittsburgh. No offense to the Pittsburgh listeners out there, but come on. Really? How long does it take to get to New York City from Pittsburgh, Corey? <laughs> right. They're the extreme shadows of New York. Not even. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't even think the sun goes no, there. No, there's not <laughs> much that shadow. not much that happens in Pittsburgh. Pennsylvania. I think Tony Deppen is from Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh, right? He was in Pennsylvania. Yeah, I think so. And and not widely known, but the worst drivers. I feel like you, you either hear New Jersey or New York. No, no. The worst drivers, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Yeah. Pennsylvania. Worst drivers. Love to drive slow on one lane highways. That's that's the thing because there are one lane highways and there's usually nobody there in uh, Pittsburgh. It's not happening. So they think they can do what they want. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you, you, uh, growing up, were you a wrestling fan growing up in your household? Yeah. Huge wrestling fan growing up. Uh, me and my brother, I probably, I came into wrestling probably in about 90, I'd say 97, 98, probably 97. Um, I don't even remember what it was that got us into it initially. I know, you know, I had an older brother, uh, yep. three years older. So anything he did, I wanted to do. Um, but I just remember getting into it and just being mesmerized by The Undertaker and asking uh, a girl in my class also loved wrestling. And she somehow had a printer and she printed me out like all this information <laughs> about The Undertaker at like eight years old. Um, and then it was like right before the Attitude Era kind of really kicked in and went into overdrive. Um, and then I, I was obsessed. I mean, I all the you know the t-shirts the whole nine wrestling with the boys outside my house you know i was the wrist um we used to cut promos i have videos of myself as a child cutting promos with my brother and 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 kind of scripting our matches and just all all those things and as i got older i I, you know definitely not where i was even though i appreciate wrestling so much um i get a lot of my news from busted open to be honest but yeah i mean I, i fell in love with wrestling um at a young age and you were in a sports, an athlete in school? 
Yeah, I uh, I played baseball my my whole life. I you know started from t-ball, and they didn't have softball in my town, so wow. I got to to play with the boys. And I was actually one of the first girls to play Babe Ruth in my town. I don't know, probably ever, but I know it was in a very long time, 30, 40 years. I actually went up and and played Babe Ruth. Um, but then in high school, they wouldn't let me play baseball yeah. with all my friends who I had played my with my entire life, and I uh, I moved over to softball. Uh, but I made varsity as a freshman. I said, I'll only play softball if I make varsity as a freshman. And I did. So, you know, but I did cheer. I, I was a cheerleader at one point. Yeah. I I did anything and everything. I would be in plays. I'd play basketball. I'd play handball at the park. I was kind of a anything that could entertain me. I'm I'm into guy things, girl things. It didn't really matter. It doesn't like, matter. I, just liked yeah. it. I was just into it all. <laughs> So what drove you into, uh, let's, uh, I guess we'll say sports, radio, sports, broadcasting, I guess is the correct word. What uh, drove you into that? You know, I think it's funny how things happen sometimes in life, because when I was in high school, I really, you know, I was an honor student growing up, but it was kind of like not something I paid a lot of attention to with school. Like once I got to high school, I just so was so disinterested <laughs> by high school. I kind of just felt right. like they're just keeping us here for a few more years before we can go out and get some jobs. You know, I got a job at 13 years old. I was just ready to work. I've always been that way. Uh, so, so high school really bored me and I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life at that point. And one day I kind of just thought about broadcasting in like, in the sense that, wow, somebody does this job, you know, like yep. they must go somewhere to, to do this job, to be the anchor on, on, you know, the local news or, or whatever. And that's when I kind of started thinking about it as like a real path. And that was probably like junior year in high school. And, um, I was really obsessed with the Yankees. I was watching a lot nice. of Yankee, like a lot of the Yankees and, uh, Kim Jones. Um, oh yeah. I just wanted to be Kim Jones. I wanted to be Kim Jones working on the Yes Network, you know, in the locker room with these men. I was like, yes, that sounds, what a job. <laughs> so that's kind of what pushed me to be in sports. And honestly, it, I, I don't want to sound like I'm trying to make a connection that's not there because I'm telling you this is the truth. But, you know, Dave LaGreca was my teacher at CSB, Connecticut School of Broadcasting. Whoa, and really? He was your teacher? He was my teacher, yes, back in 2009. Mr. And LaGreca. Yes. This he was is my Dave, sports radio. Dave, yeah. not Don. No, Dave. Wow. Dave LaGreca. Dave LaGreca. And I remember him saying that they had pretty much just launched the show around that time. And yeah, he's like, okay. I work on NFL Radio as a producer, but I have this show, Busted Open. That's what you could tell was like the thing that he cared way more about. <laughs> um, but he, if it were not for him, so he was my sports radio instructor. Um, and then... Basically, what happens at the end of, of CSB is you look for an internship. It's, okay. it's different than college. You're not still in school. You're done with school. It's only 16 weeks or eight weeks, um, depending on if you go full-time or part-time. And then you get kind of out there. And Dave was in charge of bringing in interns for SiriusXM at the time. And um, I had gotten an offer for an internship at you know here in New York, KTU, which is like the dance music channel. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is now, but it's like dance music. Did not want that at all. <laughs> like, didn't want to do music. But or dance music rather, right. but I would have taken anything. I'm, you know, I'm 19 years old. I'm, I'm ready to rock, you know? And uh, then Dave had me come to Sirius XM to go over my sports radio final and offer me an internship on Mad Dog Sports Radio. And that confirmed me being in sports, to be honest. So if yeah. it was not for Dave LaGreca, I would not be at Sirius XM probably today. So wow. maybe I would have made my way there, there eventually, but I probably would be with KTU and, 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 and iHeartRadio and but no, nah, you don't want to do that. That wasn't my path. That's not where, me. Where did you intern at, at Mad Dog Radio? What show? At the time, there was a show called The B Team. Oh, yeah. John <laughs> Murray and, yeah. And Bill Pito. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, that's how I met Babs because Babs was on. Yeah. He was producing a show uh, before then. He was not a host at that time. Yeah. He was just kind of a third mic. Yeah. And um, I interned there in February of 2010 and um, met Mike Riker, which a yeah. lot of Busted Open Nation members will know Mike. Yep. And didn't know this, but me and Mike would talk a lot about wrestling. We talk about old school wrestling, um, just things from back in the day. We kind of became friendly. Didn't know at the time he was in charge of bringing in the entry level board ops into yep. to Sirius. So as my internship was dwindling down, I didn't want to leave the building. I wanted to stay there forever. I like fell in love with Sirius. And he was like, I think you'd be great as a part-time play-by-play -play board operator. Help me, you know, revise my, my resume. And I got the gig. And so Mike Riker and Dave LaGreca, two important people to my path. It's just so 
funny to me how yeah. how things come so full circle. That's uh, man, that's going back in time. I remember that too. Mike Riker. That was right at the start. Doug and Dave. It was like one it was one day a week for an hour. I believe. Yep. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Um. Now, before we get to all your accolades of, of, of the walls you've broken down uh, and, and now with Fight Nation, my, my notes here say that you had a, a very unique side hustle. Uh, you filmed court depositions. <laughs> it sounds so much cooler than it was, honestly. Like, I wish. I wish it was as, as exciting as like, ooh, like yeah. court deposition, yeah. like trials. It usually was really boring. I don't think I had one good case. But yeah, essentially when I graduated CSB, I was just looking for anything within the industry of any sort, um, doing anything. And I found a job on Craigslist for freelance legal videographers, uh, a really great gig actually. Um, and I would go around every day, I'd get a new address. I'd go to Pennsylvania, I'd go to Connecticut, I'd go to New York, Jersey, wherever. Come down, mic up the whole room, film the deposition, read some stuff on uh, on the record. And I would sit there and read a book for eight, nine, 10 hours. Um, try not to fall asleep because it's tough. And, um, but I ended up leaving. They offered me a full-time job with them, but I turned it down to pursue Sirius XM because that was my true passion. passion. Yes. So take me from a board op, um, at Mad uh, at Mad Dog Radio at Busted Open early on, Mike Riker brings you in board op. Take me from there to the first woman uh, head of a sports channel, a fight nation. <laughs> yeah, believe me, it's still weird to me sometimes right. when I look back. You know, we just had our five year anniversary on the channel, and I was reflecting a lot on kind of how how did we get here? How did I get here? Um, well, you know, I, when I started, I, so I started in August 2010, just doing sports play by play, which is just pulling up sports feeds. Like if you're listening to the Yankee game on Sirius XM, there's somebody pushing that up, pulling down, pulling it down, airing yep. promos, cracking highlights, very basic. You're not in a live studio. It's just entry level work. Um, and from there, like you're, you know, when you're in that position, you're kind of looking around, like where is there needs for part-time help in, within sports? Like who needs a board up in studio? Who's yeah. willing to work with you? Yeah. You know, you're trained to run a board, but you don't, you know, you haven't learned the serious XM way. You learned the school safe way. And I found that opportunity um, probably, I don't know how many, how long I was working at Sirius. Not too long, maybe like six months, um, maybe less than six months. They were looking for board ops on the MMA show Fight Club. Okay. There was a show called Fight Club. Uh, the guy who was producing Ricky, he was kind of moving into a host role. So they needed people involved in that. And I didn't know a lot about MMA at all, but because I had loved wrestling so much growing up, I thought I can get into people fighting. Like, <laughs> I know I can. <laughs> and yeah. I, I was like, I, I can dig this. So I would have done it for, I mean, it could have been golf. It could, it could have been anything. I would have taken anything at that point in my career. Um, and so I just started running the board for that show. And as I ran the board, I kind of mastered that. And then I started producing the show. And then I started learning kind of just being on a show. Even if you're on two days a week, you learn so much from just doing it. Um, so eventually I just became kind of the go-to producer for not only that show, but we had a boxing show. I'd fill in on Busted Open once in a while. Um, you know, I board off on Busted Open a few times back in the day. Yeah. Um, and from through that time, as I mean, we were building these shows out, we wanted to launch a combat sports channel. That became the new goal. So I, I got promoted to producer only when I decided to take a position with NBA radio. We launched NBA radio. My boss looked at me and he said, listen, I don't know when we're going to get a combat sports channel. So you need to show that you can do more than just this. You need to get your name out there. So I was like, all right, just promise me if we can launch a five day a week MMA show, I can go back. Uh, he said, okay, <laughs> I got the agreement, worked on NBA radio for about eight, nine months until we brought in MMA junkie radio at the time. And, um, uh, there was still, I still had a supervisor. I was still young. And, um, at that point, I'm back in MMA. I'm doing kind of a lot of odd jobs, producing kind of anything I can. Um, and then my boss has basically leaves the company. Uh, he was he was running two other channels, so I kind of picked up the ball. Like when he was focused on NBA radio and the things that he was doing, I said, you know what? I can do schedules. I can do grids. Like I was not trained for any of that, but you know, you see an opportunity, you got to grab it in this yeah. world, especially in media. So I just said okay i'll start doing this i don't care if i get paid i don't care if i work all night um and from there i kind of just 
started doing this job that wasn't even assigned to me. And <laughs> eventually they promoted me to just like a basic manager title of sport zone, which was before we launched uh, rush, which then became yeah. fight nation. Yeah. And um, we kind of convinced our boss to finally brand us as a combat sports channel with busted open and MMA and uh, boxing. And so eventually I got my executive producer title. And then eventually I got my program director title, but all three of those jobs have been the same, you know, from the moment, right. I, you know, I've been running this channel since I was 25 and I was running combat sports kind of around 24. So it's pretty crazy. Um, wow. That does not happen often. Believe Let me it. say, so don't think that I'm like the rule here. <laughs> I don't want people to think it's, you know, it's timing is important and we're hard work. I look, I worked my ass off, right. but well, there you is said some it, level of timing. You said it yourself. You were looking around uh for anything you, you were you were gonna do anything uh to to showcase your stuff and then when the, the guy left you picked up literally the ball you literally picked it up and 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 laid some trails and and brought in serious in my mind i've been a serious subscriber from day one i've been listening to busted open from day one and uh it never but i'll speak on busted opens behalf here i, I i'll do that i guess uh it never actually had a place. It never fit in well on Sirius. It, I think it went from like faction to, I think it was on faction for a little bit. And then it was somewhere else. And now, but I think now that you have curated uh, all these, you got, uh, and Vanessa will help me with the MMA ones, but you got Bust Open, you got Akin Barak, you have, uh, I know I'm missing the, the Jimmy, Jimmy Smith. Smith yeah. We just launched Unlocking the Cage with Jimmy Smith. Great. Because uh, Luke Thomas just left us for a great opportunity. Yeah, we have some fighters doing MMA tonight. We have former boxer Jerry Cooney. Yeah, we've, we've definitely built it out. So I think uh, it's come a long way, at least uh, from when I first started listening on Sirius. So you should be extremely proud of yourself for that. Cause you, you... Thank you. Well, let, you know, to say just quickly about Busted Open, you know, when I kind of took over supervising Busted Open, it was a show that already had started gaining some attention. They were already building their kind of, the nation was starting to build. You know, yeah. it was a definitely a total iter different iteration of the show. Doug and Dave, we hadn't brought on pro wrestlers to work on the show yet. You know, it was very different. Yeah. Um, it was kind of at the, you know, the very ground level of it. And when I came in, you know, I said to the guys, I said, listen, I'm here to try to, make Sirius XM recognize. I'm like, until right. we get the company to recognize what this show is doing, it's going to be, you know, it, we're not going to be able to do anything. We need them to buy into what we're doing so we can get money to go travel. So we can get money to hire more talent. So you get money to have a bigger staff for the show. Um, all the things that needed to happen. So that really became my goal. Um, and, and they knew, like, I wasn't like super into wrestling at the time, but I was like, listen, I, I, I understand wrestling. You know, I'm not someone who's like, I don't get it. I don't get the appeal. I totally get the appeal and I love what those guys do um, back then and today. And it was really just about, you know, I know you guys already have it. So let's just work together and trust in me. And Dave always trusted me and Dave always had my back, even though I was young and a female and coming out of nowhere, they've always trusted in me. And, and that's why we have such a great relationship. And between him and I and our work ethic, like we love the show so much that I always just want to do what I can to help elevate them because they're going to do the work. Like I don't worry about the on air product. I mean, I know they're going to do great. So it makes my job easy. Cause I just need to go out there and make some plans and schedule some broadcasts and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Managing all that unique talent. Um, you know, you had the transition from uh, Luke Thomas to Jimmy Smith. It was that a challenge for you? Uh, yeah. Well, look, it was the first challenge is, is that you get attached to people, right. you know, like, yeah. There's some program directors in this world, and there's a lot of people who oversee that, that as you do this job, you find a way of separating yourself a little bit. You have to, because you're going to have to make business decisions. And sometimes it's your decision, and sometimes it's a decision from the top, or it's a money decision. And that was one of the hardest things for me to learn early on in my career, because I was really young, and I was everyone I knew on the channel, like knew me as this board off, you know, knew me as a producer, didn't know me as their boss at the time. Um, and Luke Thomas is someone I've worked with for seven, you know, almost eight years I worked with him. He's become a great friend. So him leaving was so sad, bittersweet. I was so happy for him. And Jamie Smith's been like waiting in the wings. Like I brought him on so eventually I could give him his own show when I had some money to do so. So this was my moment and I only had two weeks to do it. I found out uh, two weeks, 
Luke, you know, I got my two weeks notice and I said, I don't want to miss a beat. The last show ends on a Friday. The new show starting on Monday, no matter what I have to do in between SummerSlam was in between. So Ooh. it was crazy, but Jimmy's a freaking pro and you know, it's not my first rodeo of launching things in, in a short amount of time. So we got it done and I'm excited for the next kind of evolution of our MMA content on the channel. And, and Jimmy's, you know, had Rogan on the very first episode. So there you what go. Can I say? Wow. That's a yeah. good guess. First episode, right? Pretty big. First time on the channel too. So yeah. it was a great, great way to launch. That's for sure. Um, since this pandemic and things definitely switched, uh, at fight nation and with busted open and with that talent was, was that extremely, and I, this is kind of a, a dumb question. Cause I probably know the answer. Yes. Is the answer. But, uh, what were the challenges that you faced? Uh, like trying to get Dave LaGreca to, to work a zoom. Like I talked to Dave way back. He didn't even know what Skype was. So how did you get all those talents to get Zoom, get on Zoom, get a mic, work their computers? Is that just rough? Yeah, I mean, look, it's, it, you know, when this all, when everything went down, it was like we were kind of preparing because we, you know, we had heard that this could be something bigger than we thought it was with this pandemic. And we were all like, there's no way they're going to shut down a building in New York city, <laughs> right. you know, a radio company. Like there's like in your mind, you're like preparing, but you're also like, how the, we've never seen anything like this. This is a once in a lifetime situation for all of us. So uh, it kind of happened. And I felt like we got like, kind of caught with our pants down. Like, what do we do? And um, missed one day of the show. And everyone was like, yeah, what's going on? The world is ending. I was like, okay, we cannot miss one more day of the show. I was at Dave LaGreca's house. He lived um, now he lives further, but he lived, you know, 12 minutes away from my house, 15 minutes away from my house. I'm over there troubleshooting with him for God knows how long. And it wasn't his fault. It was that things weren't working the way that we thought yeah. they'd work. And yeah. we have the sports operations people, which they're the unsung heroes, the guys behind the scenes who are the tech folk, you know, like, yes, we're conduits to that. But at the end of the day, when we, when all else fails, pick up the phone and call sports ops. And Doug Mortman is the guy who, who, runs that team so wow. props to doug mortman uh the vice president of Ooh. operations for sirius xm um and yeah it was it was a challenge and i think the toughest thing is just communicating right like it's very easy to just not talk to each other right i could just sit in my yep. bubble here and not reach out and not be a part of anything but you know just making sure you're set in meetings and you know, i catch up with dave at least every other day, maybe every day. I talk to Dave constantly. We're always talking about the show. We're always, we're always in communication. So, and, and then I'll call up Bubba, I'll call up Mark, call up Tommy and just bullshit for 10 minutes and just feel like, okay, we still work together. <laughs> yeah. We still have that camaraderie. Um, so you, you, we mentioned it earlier, you've blazed all these trails, uh, for women in sports. I, I'm, I'm confident in saying that. And, uh, you're very passionate. You work hard. It comes through. Um, what what I'm wondering is, when can we get a, a female host on Busted Open? Uh, I I say Busted Open because that's the one show I really listen to on Fight Nation. I'm not a real sure. big MMA guy, uh, but just overall, like a, a female host on Sirius in general. Because I mean, there's a few, but I would like to hear one passionate about wrestling i totally agree and as a woman believe me it it is tough to yeah. feel like you feel part of the problem sometimes because you your intentions are good you know that there's a million talented women out there and it's not about you know some of these excuses you hear it's like well there's just no one applying or there's just not yeah. enough women and no <laughs> you know if you're if you want it you can find it um it, it's not because I don't want it. It's not like I haven't had the conversation. So don't think that a female host on Busted Open is a thing that is not constantly discussed, okay? Let me be clear on that. It is talked about. Um, it is something that we want. Um, I, at the very least, what I've tried to do is bring a female presence onto the show mm -hmm. with Gabby. Yep. I thought it was really important to have, you know, that me and Dave both agreed we want someone to be a female perspective on the show. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of listeners think that if there's one female, she's like the voice of all women and it's like a lot of pressure, but, um, you know, she does a great job, but yeah, I, I, I agree. There's women I have in mind. There's, there's 
you know, there's some limitations. What's tough is that I only have so many days, right? And yeah. I have Mark and I have Tommy and I have Bubba. And it's not like I want to remove one thing to get another thing. And that's what the situation you find yourself in is that you have all these great pieces, but not enough places to kind of spread them out. Um, but as my budget grows and as things evolve, you know, I, I, I don't know if it's a bold statement to say that we'll see a woman talking wrestling at some point in 2021. I would like to say that very loosely, but it is a goal it's of mine. It's breaking news, as Pat McAfee would say. Breaking news. <laughs> it's a goal. It's a goal. And it, it's, it's, I feel guilty all the time that I don't have more in it. Misha Tate, I do have UFC, former UFC yeah. women's champion Misha Tate on the channel. She's freaking fantastic. But she works once a, day, a week. So yeah. like, I can't be like, yeah, I'm doing so great. What diversity I have, you know? <laughs> I, I, I need to do better. And as I get more opportunity to, I will. Well, there's an easy, well, not easy way. Uh, I take that back. But uh, all, all we need to do is get busted open on Sunday as well. That'll give you another day. And uh, you won't have to remove anyone. Um, but I would like to suggest Vanessa or Ronda Rousey as uh, <laughs> female voices. I feel like one, we might have a better chance of affording. <laughs> and it's Ronda. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> um. The other question I have, and I've asked this, we've had Ryan McKinnell on here a couple times, a uh, great guy, and uh, I, I know the answer. Uh, I, maybe I guess I'm just looking for a little insight. I don't know. Whatever you can give us is great. Uh, I would love for the weekend show on Saturday to, to get live again because uh, I, I'm homeschooling my kid. I did literally – step down from my job so I could homeschool my kids. So I can't call in during the week, even though I'm home. Uh, so Saturday was always my time to call, to listen live, to tweet live with them. Uh, and that's something that uh, I think the, the nation really misses is that live aspect on the weekend. I miss it. And I guess maybe I actually will break some news on this show tonight. I, I, I guess, but we are, a week or two away from Busted Open Saturdays coming back live. Three hours, nine to noon, Eastern Ooh. time. It has been something I have been pushing for for a while. So again, don't think that when things aren't happening, it's because I'm not trying. I am always, I never stop trying. Right. I'm relentless. You ask the guys I work with. Um, but we're coming back. We're coming back live. Um, it'll either be the 26th or October, uh, what's October 3rd. Oh, One fun. of those days, we're coming back live. So. Awesome. There, not you there. made that happen. I'm just gonna pretend that you made that happen. There we you go. You asking me that question. That's right. what cinched it for that's us. That's right. Put, <laughs> putting you over. We, we're gonna put McKinnell and, and Mark over. McKinnell and Mark on the weekends. McKinnell, by the way, on the West Coast, we tape Busted yep. Open Saturdays at 7 a.m. Yep. Eastern time. So yep. he tapes that show at 4 a.m. <laughs> yeah, he stole it. Pacific time. And he has been such a trooper, and I feel really guilty. But I said to him, I was like, listen. This is what it is. Like, I can't do anything else about it. Yep. This is what it has to be. And he is not going to not do the show. He loves doing the show. He's, so he is that's a, his commitment yeah, for you. He's, well, we have, he's a trooper. He'll stay up yep. and watch the yep. fights in Vegas all the time, yep. too. Like, Manza, he doesn't yeah. sleep. I, I don't think he sleeps. Well, he did well, he our, yeah, he, he did our he show on a Saturday. Yeah. And he also covers MMA for me. You know, he does Wednesdays yep. with Misha Tate. So yep. um, on MMA Tonight. So that's kind of why, you know. I, I'm the one who suggested Ryan for the spot because I've known him a long time and I know he has always wanted to be in the wrestling game. And I thought, hey, I'll give you your chance. Fans hate you, you're out. <laughs> no, <I'm> just joking. <laughs> no, he's great. And he came on our show, uh, I think it was a Saturday night. Remember that night, Vanessa? He was he was really tired that night as well because he had been up all day, but he's just, he is one hell of a trooper for sure. Um. Well, Mother Marissa, I, I don't like to keep people too long. Uh, I like to, to, you know, keep them short, keep them uh, ending on a good note so people come back. Um, but something I like to do at the end of every show is I'm going to now give you the mic. Uh, you can put over anything you want. You can let us know whatever you want, plug anything, oh. bury anything. <laughs> And, uh, um, yeah, that came off wrong, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, I'm like, now I'm trying to think of like something awesome I can put over right now. <laughs> right. Uh, I know we do this. Normally we do this to wrestlers and wrestlers get all ready. Cause they're going to cut like the biggest promo. But then when we have like people from like the comic book X sector or anything along those lines, they're like, Oh, I, I, I don't know. Well, I will. Let me see. You know what I'm going to put over, um, 
this is niche, but we're a niche channel. Yeah. So, and I don't know how many, you know, I think it's a very great podcast that I recently discovered uh, called the Bradshaw boys. It's a podcast that is three straight men watching sex in the city for the first time. They go episode by episode. I'm not caught all the way up, but basically I'm rewatching the, the show as I'm listening to these podcasts. They're real funny guys get great guests on. And it's just really, I think, great to hear men talk about the show in a real way it's not like it's a big joke to them like they take it seriously but they have fun and i just i just discovered it recently and i just love it so i'm gonna put over the bradshaw boys because i want to be on their show no i'm joking <laughs> <laughs> you know? um because it's a really great show and and you can follow me um on twitter at the marissa revis r-i-v-e-s on instagram at the marissa revis uh facebook i've kind of just i can't i'm on there kind of half-heartedly so yeah, me too don't worry about that but and uh, follow our channel and listen to other things like busted open nation i get it wrestling is your game i'm not expecting you to to love boxing or or mma but one thing we really try to make an effort to do on this channel is to not isolate other fans on the you know of certain sports on the other shows ock and brock talk boxing but they talk culture lifestyle yeah. jimmy smith's hilarious mma tonight's really funny and i think you could find a way of, of finding some of these shows interesting. Like, give it a shot. Or go on the app and go to a segment that's maybe not MMA-related or something that's more topical. And um, just give it a chance. Like, I only work with talent that I truly am passionate about. And um, I think that you could find some love of, of those uh, shows. Just like, I think, Busted Open, you don't have to love pro wrestling to love Busted Open because they make you so engaged what, with the world. You yeah. know, the world of it, the business of it, everything. So... Give it a shot. Give it Fight a shot. Nation, channel 156. Awesome. Well, thank you for taking the time tonight. We greatly appreciate it. And, uh, you know, we'll hear you. We'll hear you on the radio dial, and we'll see you around. All right. Well, thank you so much, and I will talk to you guys soon. Have yep. a great rest of the show. Yeah, you too. Later. Bye. Bye. All right. That was fun. Uh, this guy's called The Standing Streamer. <laughs> Yeah!